Hello and welcome to Straight Talk. I'm Aisha Subarkash. After a nearly three-year ban, the UK is lifting all remaining restrictions on defence exports to Turkey. The head of the country's defence industry agency confirmed that the arms embargo by London had ended and that the two countries are ready to bring their defence cooperation to a new level. The sanctions were first imposed back in 2019 after Turkey launched an anti-terror operation in northern Syria to clear terror groups from its border regions. The UK and several other Western countries placed a weapons embargo on Turkey in response. But pressure is now building to relax those restrictions on Ankara as Turkish military hardware and drone exports to Ukraine have helped in its defense against Russia. Meanwhile, Turkish officials also reiterated recently that Ankara will not agree to admit any new NATO members that continue to block defense exports to Turkey. Finland and Sweden have both applied to join NATO in the aftermath of Russia's attack on Ukraine, but Ankara says it will not accept the two candidates until its own security concerns are met. And joining me now from Brussels is Samuel Dovere Vesterby. He is the director of the European Neighborhood Council. And from Atlanta, Ali Demirdas. He is a political analyst who specializes in Turkish security policies. A warm welcome to you both. Thanks for joining me on Straight Talk. So, Samuel, the UK has lifted all restrictions on arms exports to Turkey. How significant is this move and what impact will it have on both countries' defense industries? Well, uh, on the 17th of February, it was made public uh, by the Turkish Deputy Foreign Minister that the UK would remove the um, export license ban uh, on arms going to Turkey, which has been placed on Turkey unilaterally uh, since 2019, when Turkey entered uh, northern Syria, which was perceived rather negatively uh, by several EU countries, as well as the, the UK and the US. Now, BA Systems from the UK is now negotiating with Turkey to sell over 80 Eurofighter tycoons, um, typhoon, sorry, in cooperation with Leonardo and potentially also with uh, Airbus, uh, perhaps with subsidiaries in Spain and Germany and France. And so this arms block against Turkey, which uh, dates back from 2019, was very much a result of, of the EU and NATO country viewing uh, Turkey's operation in northeastern Syria as creating potential instability, increasing migration flows, and weakening the YPG, which, uh, of course, has been one of the groups fighting Daesh. From the opposite side, the Turkish government, of course, viewed these missions as very necessary in order to defend Turkey's southern border and to eliminate the YPG. Uh, which uh, is an affiliated organization of the PKK, which is, of course, a terrorist organization in Turkey, as well as being on the EU's terror list as well. Yes. So it should also be mentioned that the UK has lifted this ban now, but already in 2021, the Netherlands made public announcements which basically limited restrictions on arms which can be sent to Turkey, including dual use and basically allowing for arms to be sold to Turkey, guaranteeing in some ways that they won't end up in Syria, and I can add as well that Spain, the largest arms exporter to Turkey in the EU, has also penned defense agreements in 2021, while Leonardo, Italy's main defense industry operator, is, is also quite engaged with Turkey in terms of uh, yes. armament agreements. But Ali, what's the reason behind lifting these restrictions on Turkey? I mean, what has changed since uh, 2019? That's a great question. I look at the situation from two angles. The first angle is historical. Whenever Russia slash the Russian Empire has become resurgent in the Black Sea and Eastern Mediterranean, uh, the British Empire in the, has in the past, and England today, uh, has had the tendency to help Turkey to counter the Russian expansion. Mm -hmm. The second angle I'm looking at it is in the aftermath of the Brexit in 2016, uh, the Great Britain has wanted to counter France uh, from becoming a resurgent entity within the European Union. And France and Turkey have become a regional uh, rivals. Therefore, uh, London is helping Turkey to counter both Russia and uh, France. Yes. So Samuel, uh, has Turkey's concerns about the presence of the PKK and YPG terror organizations in northern Syria been acknowledged uh, by the UK, or there's a different aspect to the UK's uh, decision, as Ali just alluded to? 
Well, I think the the, the UK's decision um, to allow for uh, dual use uh, armament exports and uh, to engage more with Turkey has uh, far more to do with what Ali just mentioned vis-a-vis uh, the Russian threat, both in Ukraine as well as specifically in Turkey's immediate northern neighborhood, meaning uh, the Black Sea. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we and when we look at data, um, especially on the Navy, on which countries have increased their capacity, the Navy's capacity in the Black Sea, unfortunately, we'll see that Turkey has been a net loser uh, compared to countries like Ukraine and especially Russia, which have uh, really fueled their armament in- industry with regards to uh, Black Sea security. And as a result, the UK is uh, fully aware that uh, Turkey in this area, in this theater, is in a vulnerable situation and, of course, needs a NATO alliance. Mm. So, Ali, will the lifting of embargoes uh, enable British aerospace company BAE Systems uh, to help Turkey uh, build its fifth-generation uh, TF? Ex stealth fighter, and what would it mean mm-hmm. for Turkey's defenses? Absolutely. Um, after Turkey uh, was basically uh, left out of the F 35 program, uh, Ankara has uh, been uh, desperately looking for a uh, sixth generation aircraft, uh, you know, a fighter aircraft. And uh, Great Britain has become one of the most important entity that would help Turkey to develop its uh, the most needed, uh, you know, a sixth generation aircraft carrier. Mm-hmm. So we have talked about, Samuel, about Russia's attack on Ukraine, how it changed the uh, political and military calculus throughout the uh, region and brought maybe these two, two countries together. But are there any countries in line, uh, next in line, let's say, to lift arms embargoes on Turkey? I mean, could Canada be next, for example, in this case? Of course, there are many uh, NATO countries and EU countries which could absolutely be next. Uh, Turkey has traditionally been uh, uh, an important uh, uh, purchase of arms from uh, NATO and the EU, and as a result, there is an incentive to do so. And I think the signs from the delegation visits by Sweden and Finland to Ankara seem to suggest yes as well. Mm -hmm. Um, But of course, incursions into Syria and Iraq on a unilateral basis are problematic for many EU countries. While it's not possible to imagine that, that some of the conditions, like, for example, sending individuals from Turkey extradited uh, um, um, or sorry, sending individuals from Sweden extradited to Turkey, that would be very, very difficult to imagine because of legal and independent judicial uh, procedures. It is indeed more likely to imagine that uh, Sweden, which is a, an armament, um, has a large armament industry, uh, could, for example, also uh, stop the limitations on arms uh, selling to Turkey. But here, Ali, uh, how to strike a balance? Because Turkey uh, have said, has said that a wider scale anti-terror operation along its border with Syria will be launched soon. <clears throat> if it did, uh, would the UK reimpose those sanctions? Uh, the UK has always been sympathetic to Tur- Turkey's uh, uh, security threat perception coming from the southern, uh, across the southern borders. Therefore, I'm not expecting the Great Britain to, uh, you know, initiate uh, any some sort of embargo, arms embargo on Turkey. Uh, going back to Samuel's point, the uh, threat perception of NATO slash the European Union shifted from Syria slash the Middle East to North to Russia. Therefore, I am expecting the European Union and uh, the NATO countries within Europe. Uh, are going to be more lenient towards Turkey's uh, Syria incursion. Mm-hmm. Um, Samuel, you meant you said that a unilateral action by Turkey would probably won't be welcomed by uh, the West. How, how do you think the West and Turkey as NATO allies uh, react to a possible military operation that would expand the existing 30 kilometer deep security zone on the Syrian side of the Turkish borders? Are we likely to see more sanctions again, maybe? I mean, I think that very much depends on how those incursions look and the degree of cooperation which is sought by Turkey together with NATO and EU uh, allies. Like in the same way that the EU and NATO need to take into, of course, account Turkey's security concerns on its southern borders vis-a-vis the PKK, YPG, and so forth, and also need to take into account the, the so-called Adana Protocol, 
Mm -hmm. It's equally important that Turkey takes into account the EU security interest. That's, of course, Daesh, which caused thousands of deaths across the EU over the past two decades, in a similar fashion that the PKK has caused thousands of deaths within Turkey over the past decades. And, and of course, uh, the fact that these Turkish unilateral incursions into northeastern Syria could lead to higher levels of migration, which will affect both Turkey. As we all know, Turkey has uh, an enormous discussion domestically about migration these days, and, and that's a very important discussion, as there also is an, an enormous discussion about migration, especially in southeastern and eastern Europe today. Yes. So these, these areas, if there is scope for cooperation and diminishing the security concerns both of Turkey and of the EU and NATO allies, then sanctions become less likely. Yes, but Ali, uh, uh, would, would you agree? Because what does Ankara yes. want to achieve? We want, we know that it wants to break this terror corridor. But as Samuel yeah. mentioned, Ankara also wants to resettle uh, about one million Syrian refugees to that area. Isn't it doable? Isn't yeah. it? The, the notion viable? that Turkey's in, Turkey's incursion into Syria will create a refugee influx into Europe is is wrong in many aspects. One of which is Turkey. Turkey is actually staging these incursions. It has in the past staged these incursions to create a safe zone uh, into which the um, um, uh, refugees from within Turkey would settle there and ease not only Turkey's refugee problem but also Europe's refugee problem. Therefore. I believe uh, Turkey's incursion into Syria is going to help both Turkey and the European Union. Okay, we'll see about that. Unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.